I've got something very, very, very important to share with you. Very important. So please, 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 please be patient with me. Please, before you scroll, um, find something else that is much more interesting to listen to. Please, I'm pleading with you. Stick with me to the end of this video, especially, especially if you have children, especially if you're a carer of some sort, an immediate carer to young children or to any children, really. Um, or if you are around kids, you know, you have, you have nieces and nephews, grandchildren, cousins, um, you know, close or far, please listen. This is heavy. And I, I'm praying, Holy Spirit, that you open the eyes and the ears of those that would listen, open the heart of their understanding to receive this for what it really is. Now I've had a, a vision, a dream vision. It's a revelation. And I, I've, it's, it's really been impressed in my heart. I've seen it so many times in my surrounding. I have announced it so many times. I've talked about it in so many different ways. But what I saw, what I saw this night, this night that just passed, is, it was really disheartening um, concerning our, our children and young people. I, in the dream, what I saw was a darkness, a dark figure that um surrounded uh many children i i don't know how to i don't know how to place it it was kind of like it was kind of scattered so one way i can explain it even in the dream as i saw it is like this darkness this it was a figure but at the same time it was an atmosphere so it would go into into, into that kind of space of um state of um appearance um interchangeably and this darkness was at the background so the way i can explain it is like say you're watching tv and you know the background is like um blurred out and you know you kind of like just look at the, what's on the forefront is what um you would is what you would pay attention to that's exactly what was happening in this in this dream so nobody really even though it was very obvious that the darkness was there nobody was actually paying attention to the darkness everybody was more focused on what was on the forefront and what was on the forefront seemed quite much more interesting and entertaining but the background had a an impact and an influence an influence on what was happening in the foreground and that's what people just wasn't aware of so in the dream i was running around like trying to like um it's like i could see this image of background and foreground was in every community every home and everywhere and i felt like i was almost running mad because i was running around trying to bring people's attention to the darkness behind so i was telling people can't you see can't you see what's happening in the background pay attention to what's happening in the background but um people just looked at me like oh you're you're over um you're over exaggerating you know it's, it's not that serious you know we can't really they, there was there was that willingness wasn't there to see what was happening in the background um so I got really, I was, I was broken, you know, and I just thought, oh, if only they can see, and I can see that's the, it was like, there's a leaking happening, like, um, what was in the background was leaking forward into the foreground. Um, and they didn't see how that was influencing the, the information that they were receiving. And so, um, then I, I was looking after a lot of, I found myself looking after a lot of children, some children I knew as um friends children and some children i didn't um i didn't know but i was looking after a lot of children and one of the mothers um that I was looking after her kids she went out for like a a girls night out with her with her other friends and but before she left like less than 30 minutes before she left she ran back in and um she was like shivering she was cold and she said i'm not going there anymore i'm not going there anymore i want to stay here and I said, oh, what happened? Is it because of the weather? Is it because it's cold? She's like, no, I just don't want to be in that place anymore. So then the Spirit of God took me, even though I was with that woman in that house, the Spirit of God took me to that place where she had been. So I had an, a vision in the dream. So I saw where she was and I saw that she was with two other women. Um, one of the women I knew and the other one I didn't know. And um, 
So the women that I did, the woman that I did know, she, they were still talking and chatting and laughing and kind of like, you know, just the way girls do, you know, how women just sit down and talk and laugh. So then I thought, why did she leave? Um, it didn't look like there was anything happening here. And it doesn't look like these women that she had left behind were concerned of her absence. So I was asking it. I was asking the spirit of God because I knew I was seeing into something, you know. So I was asking the Lord, like, why did she leave? And then the Lord told me, the woman that I know, the Lord said that her 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 gift, her strength is being used as a weakness. So this woman that I know, she is a lovely person. She is a very friendly person. Um, she's She can be quite a talkative. Um, but the Spirit of God said to me that her strength is being used against her. So the areas where she should be talking um for the lord boldly you know um she's kind of like um intimidated not intimidated maybe she doesn't want to um she doesn't want to offend people so she becomes this very like a um i don't know how to explain it i don't know how to explain it so she becomes very um interactive and go on with the flow and even if it's some, even if somebody says something out of the line kind of like oh i don't want to seem a bit like you know overly spiritual about these things so she would laugh along kind of thing you know so the spirit was said to me that i don't even know how i'm going to find the boldness to tell this person this thing you know i don't know i'm still praying about it lord because i don't know how i'm going to tell her but the spirit of god revealed it to me that her strength has become her weakness i gave her that strength for a reason but now it has become her weakness and the enemy is using it against her not only that but she doesn't realize this woman doesn't realize that um there are women of God that are in a place of weakness that are waiting for her to for her to speak truth. Um, but because she hasn't, these women have um settled for whatever lies they have received or told themselves. So the Spirit of God made me understand that this woman that had left that gathering, she was aware of that. She sensed danger. She didn't know, she didn't quite understand what the danger was, but she sensed danger like. I can't entertain this conversation any further. I can't be in this gathering any further. I need to leave so that the Spirit of God can lead me into wherever I need to be. So she she sensed that danger, but she just didn't. Under so that's why even when I was asking her, why did you leave? She couldn't really give me an answer. What happened? She couldn't really give me an answer. I just knew that I can't be in this with this group of women anymore. Um, I need to I need to get out. So that scene passed, and I know that was for God was revealing something to me about those two women. So I'm praying for them. Um and if the Lord if that's what if that's what the Lord wants me to do to, to speak to those women, then I will do that. So then I found myself this woman that had left, I found myself with her children. I found myself with two of her children and other many other children. And I saw the darkness over the kids. So I became like it's like I was I was responsible for all, for all these kids that this darkness was after. I was responsible for all these kids. And so um, wherever I went, the kids followed me. And then we went to what looked like a school. But this school was so big, you can describe it more like a, the size of a prison. It was massive. Um, so I, I I locked the kids in a room. Like, a, like it would look like a classroom, but it was really big. Like if you imagine an average, let's say like a lecture room, you know, a university. But like three times the size it was really big so i was there with the kids and they seemed so frightened and so worried and then one of the one of the girls who was a uh, she's a teenager um a young teenager she screamed she started screaming and i said what's wrong and she said um that she can see the darkness on her phone so then i told her to pray i said pray it will go away you have no choice but to listen to you so she said go away in jesus name and then she just kind of like, um, yeah, that's all she said. And I thought, okay, I need to teach this girl um, how to pray. Um, I need to teach her the mode of prayer with this kind of thing. So I came close to her. So then I I, I looked at the phone and then I saw that, um, um, I saw the image there in the back. Like, it's not, it's like it, at the edge, the corner of the phone. Like you could, you could, you could almost miss it. You could almost miss it. Um, and if you did not notice it, then it will just stay there operating doing whatever it was doing but the moment i noticed it it became amplified 
So it started coming to the screen closer and closer and closer and like it became so obvious. So the image that I saw this time, um, it was an actual image. It was a sense, but it was an image. So his head was whole, his whole head was covered. Um, he wore like everything was black. And then he, he had like a breastplate that had like a triangle, triangular look to it. So he came down in a triangle form um, on both sides and it was black. And then I rebuked it. So then I started praying against it. So I was praying, praying, and I was distracted by prayer. And so I didn't realize that this thing had manifested itself in, um, you know, in reality, right in front of us. And now he had a, he had an axe, like a, yeah, he had an axe and a matchet, and he was coming after the kids. So then there was a, since the, the room was so big, there was a massive window that like horizontal like this. So then I jumped outside the window, um, it's still in the school, but it was in like in another room. And then I was taking the kids out one by one. So I had two kids in my hand, but at this time I started becoming really frantic about my child because my girl was among them. So then I was calling her name. I said, come out, like, come, come quickly. You know, I was thinking, I want to save other people's kids, but I have to save my child too. So I was calling my child, but I couldn't hear her. She was really crowded by the other girls. And so I had to run with those other two kids that I had in my hand because the thing was coming closer. I remember feeling really crushed in my spirit that I had left my child. I remember feeling like the rest of the kids that I had left who had died. And my child was there. And so I, that crushing that I felt almost distracted me from, I, I just felt incredibly overwhelmed. I just felt like, why are these parents, why are they not listening? Why, if all of them came together, if we all came together, then we can fight this fight, you know, we can fight this um, war. But now I'm thinking, um, now even my child has gone in the midst of all this and I was just thinking, I, I can't do this, you know. So then that anger and that pain and that brokenness kind of like led me to do something really crazy. So I ran, I ran, ran, ran outside of the school and I came, to, it came, it was a different um, place. And so in this place, I went to the rooftop, like the, the top of the roof, like, and it felt quite ancient. It felt like I was, it felt like it was like, um, um, those Roman times, you know, because the roof on top of the roof, you can actually live on top of the roof. You know, one of those roofs that you, you go up there and it looks like, yeah, it looks like people can actually sleep there. So then I was screaming it on, I was screaming it like literally on the rooftop, like screaming to call parents' attention, telling them that there is a darkness. Can you not see that there is a darkness that is surrounding your children? It's causing them depression. It's causing them illnesses. It's killing them. It's killing them physically. It's killing them spiritually. Your children are miserable. They're sad. They are with me. They're not happy. You know, the enemy is after them. I was screaming until I had no more voice left. I was like trying to get their attention. How wicked are you to not see that your children are hurting or the enemy is after your children? How wicked are you? to be so occupied or so preoccupied that you cannot even prioritize your children. I was screaming like that. And then this man, um, this man happened to walk past with his little boy, um, some some henchman, he like really, really built. Um, I don't know why that was standing out to me, but he was quite built. And then he 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 was he was um yeah he his little boy was riding so he was teaching his boy how to ride a bike so then I, I was screaming and this guy was not even looking at me so i ran to him and then i literally i grabbed him and i pulled him back and i was like what's wrong with you woman and i said to her can you i said to him can you not hear what i'm saying can you not hear what i am telling you i am saying there's a darkness can you not see it can you not sense it at least can you not stop to listen and the guy said there is no darkness this is all in your mind you're just making up stuff and then he wanted to go, like, walk away. And I grabbed him. And I was so angry. I grabbed him and pulled him back. I'm like, this guy's not going nowhere. He has to accept this. Somebody has to hear this. Somebody has to hear what I'm saying. And then he pushed me again. And as I was about to run towards him again, another man behind me, um, when I, no, he, I don't remember if he called me, but I turned around and I saw him. And he had a child as well. He had a little boy as well. He said to me, I believe you. I felt just that one person that said, I believed you. I felt, I felt this sense of relief. Like, yes, thank you for believing me. He was like, no, I really do because I have seen it and I have sensed it too, you know? Um, and so the other man that was, didn't believe me turned around and said, what, you believe her? And then he said, yeah. And then, um, 
So because this guy believed me, the other one felt a bit more um, convinced, should I say. And so I said to him that I would lead him to the place where we would go to, to rescue the children, where we would go to fight this darkness. And he said, okay, that's fine. So we're leaving, we're going. And then this other guy now, um, the hench guy, then started to um, follow us as well. So he wanted to, I knew he was, he was thinking, okay, if one person believes her, then she probably is not mad. So he was following us. And as we were walking, we came across, across some soldiers who had guns and they were all dressed in black. But I knew in my spirit that this soldier was not, these soldiers were not for us. I knew that they were working for the enemy. They were against us. They had guns. They had a gun like on my back as we were walking. But they couldn't do anything. They were just there, but they, they just couldn't do anything. And I heard it in my spirit that the reason why they couldn't do anything was because these two men were with me. These two men were with me. You know, so they couldn't they couldn't do anything. They just followed us um, where we were going. So as we were going, then I woke up. And um, among many things, when I woke up, the Spirit of God made me understand the power of fathers standing up. Now, I'm sorry, I may sound a bit um, tired when I'm sp as I'm speaking or drowsy, but ha I have been fasting and I haven't fasted in a long time. <laughs> so no food, no water um, for the whole day. And so so that's why I'm coming, I'm sounding a bit like, yeah, tired. But well, please bear with me. Um, I'm going somewhere. So the Spirit of God made me understand the power of fathers standing up. So this message is for all parents, but particularly fathers. There is something about men standing up. There's something about men standing up. Well, isn't that what they're there for? Are they not meant to be protectors, um, fighters, rescuers, saviors? So as a man, as a father, as a husband of any sort, as a carer, we need to rise up. You need to stand because it's not that the mothers cannot stand, you know, it's not that they cannot um, um, do all that they need to do. It's just that the mothers might just be so um, exhausted, so um, distracted, you know, dealing with so many other things that they might not be hearing. So when you know that the mother, the wife, the woman is not hearing, you as a father need to stand up. That is your duty and that is your responsibility. Now you may ask me, how do I stand? You can stand in prayer, number one, first and foremost, most importantly. You can hear this right now and you can allow the Spirit of God to move in your heart, move you into a place of prayer for your children. Move into a place of prayer that Lord, please open my eyes. Let me see what's happening. Let me have an understanding. Let me not just take these things that are just ordinary. Let me have an understanding of what's happening deeper. Give me an insight into the spiritual realm. There is something dark moving. I mean, even if you don't see spiritually, you should be able to see, even if it's just in the physical sense, that mm, the atmosphere is shifting and it's not for our good. The enemy is afraid of our children because our children are going to become his future contenders. If you're not here tomorrow, your child, your child's generation will be here. And so if you can weaken them from right from this prime age, then he really has no battle in the future against them. He really has no reason to be afraid. So that's why he's attacking them. So we need to secure them in prayer. When I say prayer, pray for them, but even pray for yourself as a parent. Open my eyes to see, Lord. And when I see, let me take it seriously. Let me take it seriously, Lord. Fix my heart to obey you in accordance um, with, with uh, my parenting. You know, we're going to be held accountable in how we, how we um, looked after these children. We are the Lord will hold us accountable. We have a duty, we have a responsibility. So you can stand in prayer first and foremost. And then you can stand also in your decision making. Like when you see, 
that something, your child is being taught something that you know is contrary to the will of God, you can stand and say, no, that is wrong and teach your child right. Grab them while they're young. Use that opportunity to teach them right. You can make it your aim to teach your child right from wrong. The world is coming hard. You must come harder. You mustn't compromise. That's one thing I am learning now that the Lord is teaching me. Give clear definitions to your children about their genders, about their identity, about what is wrong and what is right. It sounds very simple and very basic. But you've got to come strong. You've got to come stronger. You know, you've got to you've got to be sure about what you have to be what's the word I'm looking for? You have to be intentional. I think that's the better word, yes. That intentionality, you have to have it. You have to be intentional towards what you're doing. Don't just like throw it in the wind and like, oh, yeah, um, I've heard parents say this, make statements like this. Um, we'll just, well, what can we do? It's the world that we're in now. All we can do is pray for our children. No, that's not all you can do. Yes, prayer is very important. Put it number one in the list, but that's not all you can do. Do all that you must do. After you've prayed, act teach direct lead stand firm stand firm and equip yourself give yourself the knowledge so that you'll be able to teach your child when they come with their questions you should be able to answer their questions it is not that the teacher can answer their questions or another parent can answer the question or a friend can answer the question you should be able to answer your child's questions so that, that would give you the discipline that you need to go deeper into your understanding of the things of God. If you don't know the answer, pray that the Holy Spirit will give you that information. Let, let your heart be open and prepared. So even as I'm speaking now, I could be an information. I could be a knowledge. These things I'm sharing with you could be information and a knowledge. But is your heart prepared to receive it? Is your heart prepared to hear it? Are you going to listen to the end of the video? Are you going to sit down and comprehend and listen to everything I've said? Or are you going to allow the enemy come in there and whisper in your mind and take away the little knowledge that has been laid in there? Or are you going to look at me and base and judge me based on my my personality or based on the fact that, um, you know, you don't know me or that you do know me? You know, you do know me and I know the kind of person she is. And so therefore, like you allow the enemy kind of like um, play with your mind. Oh, I don't know her. Why should I believe her? Why are you going to receive this as information, as knowledge? All over the world, this is happening. All over the world. Don't, don't assume that this is just happening um, in the Western world. If you're, look, if you're listening to me from other parts of the world. All over the world, our children are targets. And I, was, I woke up thinking, Lord, I cannot, be, I cannot be that burden to the point that I let my child go. I don't know. I'm even praying for God to give me revelation in that area. Like, what's, what, does that, what does that mean? You know, that I wasn't able to even receive my child because I was so busy about other people's children. I don't want that to be the case for me. But the Lord will reveal that to me. But I know I have this burden in my heart to speak, um, to share this with you. And to encourage everyone. But fathers, husbands, men, question yourself. Am I... Um, operating in my home with the duty and the responsibility that has been given to me. This is the area where you really exercise your authority. Your authority is not exercising you, bossing your family around and um, becoming abusive and proving that you're a man. No, no, no. This is where you exercise your true authority to stand up on behalf of your family, to stand up because, stand up for your family, to look the enemy in the eye and say, no, you're not going to win over my home you're not going to win over my children if it's prayer i will pray if it's reading i will read if it's studying i will study if it's humbling myself i will humble myself to in any way possible to ask questions to have an understanding of what's going on if it's sacrifices i will make the sacrifices there is this thing i keep posting where i say what you refuse to sacrifice for your child now 
you will sacrifice countless amounts of times once um, the enemy is through with them, once the education system is through with them. The education system is, is what's, what's the word I'm looking for? It's terminated. The first education should be in the home. So yes, even if you're sending your children to school, which right now, me personally, I know, I know this is a personal point of point of view. Me personally, I am even thinking, you know, it is better that you don't even send them to school and you teach them at home. But if you say that you must, if you say that you must, make sure you're doing more than what the school is doing. Make sure you're 10 times ahead of what they're doing. You know, make sure you're aware of everything that's happening in that school for the safety of your child or your children. So please, I hope you have heard me. I hope you have um, received what I've said. And I pray that the Spirit of God will do the rest of the work in your heart. In Jesus' name, amen.